Welcome to Code Report. I'm your host, Connor Hookstra. We had six contests last week, starting with Code Forces round 487 on Monday. We also had another contest from Code Forces on Saturday, round 488. On Thursday, we had the TCO18 round 2B from Top Coder. That's the second contest in the second round of that tournament. Note there were some technical difficulties in the contest. Uh, the contest didn't start until about half an hour after it was scheduled to, and due to those technical difficulties, if you weren't able to partake, they're going to be holding a third contest uh, in round two called round 2C, and that will be held on uh, June 26th. Also on Saturday, we had from Hacker Earth the start of the June circuits contest, and of course, we also had the weekly leak code contest 89 on Saturday evening. And just today on Sunday, we had the Code Chef June cookoff. Taking a look at the top 10 leaderboards, here they are for the top coder leak code and Code Chef contests. The most notable finishes from familiar names are in first place in the Div 1 Code Chef contest is Gennady, or uh, also known as Tourist, second Igor K, uh, third Omnic, and fourth U Yui. Also on the top 10 leaderboards from the Code Forces contests, uh, the most notable finishes in round 47 we had in 10th place Natsugiri, and in round 488 we had in first Omnic and in third Scott Wu. Taking a look at the overall top 10 leaderboard, uh, there were some changes due to round 488. Uh, the top four places uh, didn't uh, change. We still have in first Tourist, second Petra, third 00, and fourth Fate Ice. Uh, but Umnik jumped two spots from seventh to fifth. Uh, Silo Viale dropped one. Uh, Dotoria dropped uh, or or jumped from ninth to seventh. Uh, LHIC there was no movement, and Raid Woosh dropped a couple spots from sixth to ninth. In today's video, we're going to be covering problem two from Lead Code Contest eighty nine entitled Car Fleet. The problem states n cars are going to the same destination along a one lane road. The destination is target miles away. Each car I has a constant speed spi I in miles per hour and initial position position I miles toward the target along the road. A car can never pass another car ahead of it, but it can catch up to it and drive bumper to bumper at the same speed. Note the distance between these two cars is ignored. They are assumed to have the same position. A car fleet is some non-empty set of cars driving at the same position and same speed. Note that a single car is also a car fleet. If a car catches up to a car fleet right at the destination point, it will still be considered as one car fleet. And the question asks how many car fleets will arrive at the destination. And note the number of cars we're going to have is going to be between 0 and uh, 10 to the 4th. And the target speed and position is all going to be between uh, 10 to the 6th with obviously all the positions being less than the target. So let's take a look at the example that LeetCo provided us with. So here is the example. Uh, the target is 12. We're given the initial positions of the cars and the initial speeds of the cars. And uh, the question, uh, the example is saying that uh, the answer is going to be three. There's going to be three fleets of cars that arrive at the destination at different times. So let's take a look at how we would sort of work through this. So visually, this is what uh, this data is telling us. So our target is at 12, and we're given uh, initial positions 10, 8, 0, uh, 5, and 3, and the corresponding speeds uh, in miles per hour, which is uh, very slow these cars are driving, um, are going to be uh, given by the speed array. And so uh, obviously we have these four, five different cars and above them are the speeds. So uh, if we process this one hour at a time, it'll look as follows. So uh, after the first hour, this is uh, that what the movement will be. So the purple and blue car are going to end up at destination at their target destination. Uh, the orange and yellow car, uh, due to the fact that orange is driving a lot faster than the yellow car, are going to form a fleet and they're going to move together. And the red car uh, is just moved uh, sort of one mile. And so this is going to be our first fleet. Uh, these uh, cars go away, and then we're going to process our next uh, hour. And uh, the yellow and orange car uh, are going to arrive at our target, and that makes two fleets. And then we just have the red car left, and then this is going to 
uh, arrive at the target as well. So that's three different fleets. So that's uh, visually how it works. So how are we going to figure this out? So basically we're gonna uh, have three different variables. Uh, the last time that a car arrived, uh, the time of the current car that we're gonna calculate for each car, and then the number of fleets. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort our cars by their initial position and then we're going to process the cars from the ones closest to the target uh, to the ones uh, furthest away so we'll first look at the purple car we're going to calculate uh, at what time is this purple car going to arrive at the target destination so this is simply uh, the target minus the current position divided by the speed that is going so it has two miles to go and it drives two miles per hour so it's going to get there in one hour. So we're going to calculate uh, that it'll get there at time one hour. And because this time is greater than the last time, always the first car is going to uh, create the first fleet. Uh, we're going to end up with one fleet, and then we're going to reset the last time that a car got to the target to the time that we just calculated. Uh, so at this point, we can get rid of the purple car. We know we have at least one fleet due to the purple car, and we're going to now process the blue car. So we're going to process uh, or calculate the time that the blue car is going to arrive the same way we did for the purple. Uh, the blue car has four miles to go, and it's driving at four miles per hour, so it's also going to arrive at time one. Uh, but because uh, our purple car already arrived at time one, we know that they're going to be in the same fleet, so the blue car is not going to start a new fleet, so we can just sort of ignore the blue car. We we go to the yellow car and we're going to do the same sort of steps for every single car. So this yellow car is going to arrive at uh, sort of hour seven uh, because it's driving one mile per hour and has seven miles to go. Uh, so this is greater than our last time. So we know that the yellow car is going to form a new fleet. And so we're going to do a plus plus to our fleets and then reset our last time. Uh, we'll ignore the yellow car now, process the orange car. If you do the math, the orange car is going to end up uh, going with the yellow car as the same fleet. And then we get to the red car. The red car is moving pretty slowly and it's going to get there at hour 12. And so we're going to do a plus plus, set time to 12, or calculate time to be 12, do a plus plus on fleets, and then reset our last time. But because it was the last car, uh, this reset won't really mean anything. So that's how we end up getting our number of fleets. And it's the, the general idea. So we just need to sort our cars by initial position and uh, pair the speeds with that. So we, we are able to do our calculation of this time. And then just one by one, we process these. And uh, the trick is just to remember the last time uh, that a car arrived. And whenever the time of the current car is greater than uh, the the last time that the previous car uh, arrived at the target, we, knew, we know this constitutes uh, or creates a new fleet. So that's our algorithm. Let's take a look at our code. So here is our C++ solution. We've got a function car fleet that returns an integer, which is going to be the number of fleets, and it takes three different parameters, an integer target and uh, two vector of integers, uh, P for the initial position and S for the initial or the speed. And uh, what we're going to do in order to sort our uh, our cars by initial position is we're going to create a map of floats. The floats is due to the fact that we could have a floating point number uh, for, the t for the hour that a car arrives or the time that a car arrives at the target. And so we're just going to loop through uh, the number of cars we have and we're going to insert into our map uh, the position and the speed. And note that we're uh, negating the initial position because we want to process uh, the car that's closest to the target first. So without the negative, we're, we're gonna end up sorting it from uh, the sort of the smallest initial position, which will be the furthest away from the target, uh, to the largest initial position, which will be the closest. So we wanna reverse that. Um, and that will also affect uh, this down here. This plus is actually, we wanna be uh, minus, but because we're negating this, we wanna do a plus here. So. Once we've finished this second line, we have our map of cars, which is now sorted from uh, closest to the target, and then the value of this uh, pair in each in the map is going to be the speed. So we initialize a variable fleets to zero, and we initialize a uh, a variable last time to be negative one and then we are going to use a range base for loop to for, to loop through our cars and for each car we're going to calculate time which as mentioned in the visual explanation is just target 
uh, minus the initial position. But like I said, because our initial position is negated, we're using a plus here uh, divided by the speed. So this gives us the time that our car arrives. And if the time is greater than the last time, uh, we're going to do a post increment on fleets. And then we are going to do uh, a reset of our last time to be equal to the current time. And once we finish this range based for loop, uh, we can just return fleets. So that's our whole solution. Taking a look at our Java code, it's very similar, uh, just some syntax differences. So the uh, map uh, in C++, the equivalent of that in Java is a tree map. And uh, we have to uh, declare float float here and there's no uh, implicit conversion. So we have to explicitly cast our integers to floats here. And then we come down, uh, the equivalent of a range-based for loop in Java is an enhanced for loop. It's not uh, as clean the syntax, but it, it is the same thing. And uh, we just have some different methods on our tree map. So instead of first and second, we have get key and get value. And uh, the rest is the same, we just don't have the comma operator either. And uh, once you've finished your enhanced for loop, you can just return fleets and it does the same thing. And our last solution is a Python solution. Uh, thanks to Lee215, uh, I referenced his solution on the Leak Code forum. So we don't have a tree map or a map uh, equivalent in Python. So we're just using a sorted list of uh, tuples here. So we're using the zip function to sort of zip together our position and speeds. We're sorting that and then we're calculating, uh, so it's actually, it's not a list of tuples. We're creating a tuple here, a uh, sorted list of tuples, and then using that to create just a list of uh, floats that are the times. Um, and so once we have this list, we then just initialize our fleets and last time variables. And then uh, we use a loop and loop through uh, for each time in our list times. Uh, we can just check if time is greater than last time. Do a plus uh, equals one for fleets and then reset last time and then just return fleets as well. Uh, so the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which is going to be n log n in the number of cars we have because uh, the sort function and the insertion and uh, put functions in the Java and C++ are log n operations, or so sort here is n log n, and the insertion and put functions in the C++ and Java operations are uh, log n, and we're doing that n times. And once again, thanks to Lee215 uh, for the Python solution. Taking a look at our contest that we have in our upcoming week, we have a pretty busy week. We've actually got two week-long contests. This is the first time this has happened since I've started this YouTube channel. So we have the Hacker Rank Week of Code 38, which starts tonight at 3 a.m. or technically tomorrow at 3 a.m. And we also have from Hacker Earth the June Circuits contest continuing on. Uh, then we have three contests from Code Forces round 489 for Division 2 on Monday tomorrow, uh, round 490 for Division 3 on Thursday, and round 491 for Division 2 on Saturday. And then finishing off the week we have the weekly leak code contest 90. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.